antara dajjal dan fitnahnya ini adalah dua hal yang berbeda di mana fitnah dajjal muncul terlebih dahulu dajjal ini akan keluar nanti dari negeri Persia sebuah kota dalam hadis sahih dikatakan dari wilayah namanya Yahudia Allahu alam apakah ya dia dari turunan Yahudi atau bukan tapi yang jelas dajjal nama orang dipastikan disebutkan nama-nama namanya dan cirinya saat itu kata Rasulullah wahai kaum lelaki bawalah istri-istri kalian masuk ke rumah ikat dia di dalam rumah tambatkan dia di tiang-tiang rumah kamu carilah ibu-ibu kamu bawa dia ke rumah ikat kakinya ikat tangannya tambatkan dia di tiang-tiang di dalam rumah carilah anak-anak gadis kamu selamatkanlah wanita-wanita kamu karena sesungguhnya yang paling banyak sujud menyembah dajjal ketika dajjal masuk ke kota-kota di bumi ini adalah kaum wanita we find as i said earlier that it is a unique world there's never been a dunia like this before and the most puzzling thing about this dunia today is that there is an actor at work on the stage of the world and he is an actor who seems to have come out of nowhere we had great civilizations babylon was a great civilization where did this fellow come from and he takes control of the world Who is he? Is this happening by accident? He has a power that none can resist. He brings a scientific and technological revolution which when applied to military science gives him unprecedented power. He doesn't need a sword anymore to fight. He can kill you from a distance. Huh? Strange. He has unprecedented. Proceed now. The world now proceeds to a shadow which will manifest itself in three stages. In akhirul zaman. Because you know that there is a fella, a mastermind at work, who wants to rule the whole world. And he gave us his first stage of his shadow that Allah spoke in the Quran with Pax Britannica. And the second stage of the shadow was Pax Americana. And we are saying, that the third and last stage of the shadow is going to be Pax Judaica. When Israel will seek to replace the United States of America as the next ruling state in the world. And Israel is going to say, away with all of this godlessness. This fellow is not only godless, this fellow is also decadent. He, he is the one who says a man could marry another man and get a marriage certificate. You know who the fella is, modern Western civilization. So Pax Judaica is going to come to say we want to sweep away all this godlessness and all this decadence. We want to turn away from all of this oppression and so on. We want to bring back the world, bring it back to religion, bring it back to the worship of the God of Abraham. Oh, it's going to be very, very, very interesting eh, tomorrow. If we are alive and this drama unfolds, 
As they say to the world, we must come back to religious values. This is Pax Judaica. But their oppression will be greatest of all. Because they want to rule over everybody. And eventually a man will stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am al Messiah, the Messiah. But he would not be al Messiah, the Messiah. He would be Dajjal, the false Messiah. For him to achieve his objective, a Pax Judaica, for Israel to rule the world, he has to make Israel very, very big, like the United States, but that's not possible. Israel cannot expand. Israel is surrounded by the Arabs. Forget it. Or the world has to become much smaller. Which one will it be? Which one will it be? Yes, the answer is the world will have to become much smaller. That's why we're going to have nuclear war. They want the nuclear war. They know it. And they've already prepared for nuclear war with the underground bunkers and so on. So they will survive. In order to have the nuclear war, they got to provoke Russia. So Russia had to become a nuclear power. And that's why they transferred nuclear technology to the Soviet Union. Yes, so that the Soviet Union could become a nuclear power, so that tomorrow there could be nuclear war, so that the world will become small. Are you beginning to understand now what's happening in the world? <laughs> Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam is talking to his companion Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And they're sitting next to each other. His, his hand is on his shoulder, I think. And he said to him about the signs of Akhirul Zaman. Umran al-Bayta, the hadith is in the Sunan of Abi Dawood. And he says to him, Umran al-Bayt al-Maqdis, when Jerusalem is center stage and flourishing, built up, Kharabu Yatrib, at that time, Look to Medina and you see Medina in forlorn desolation. Nobody, no event in Medina, nothing. It plays absolutely no role whatsoever, even in Arab affairs. When that occurs, which is where we are now, then look for the Malhama. The Malhama is a great war. The Malhama is not just a great war. It's a war like no war has ever been. None. First time. What kind of war will it be? The Malhama. Hadith in Sahih Bukhari. That 99 out of every 100 of the combatants will die, will be killed. 